In this screencast lecture, we are going to see about the induced mutations. In the previous lecture, we have seen how spontaneously mutation has been created in the organism. Here, this induction can be achieved by various agents such as physical mutagens that includes ionizing radiation and even the non-ionizing radiation and even certain chemical agents can able to cause the mutations. So, these are all the various agents that can able to induce the mutation. Induction of the mutation artificially was first done by Hermann Muller when he was subjecting the X-rays on the fruit flies. That is when X-rays have been passed on into the fruit flies, it caused certain mutation mainly on the sex linked recessive lethal mutations mainly in Drosophila melanogaster. So, the agent that can be able to cause mutation is referred as a mutagens. So, they can be of a chemical or physical agents as I have already listed. Sometimes even the biological agents such as viruses, transposable genetic elements can also increase the frequency of the occurrence of mutation in an organism. Now, we look at in detail about the ionizing radiation which is caused by X-rays and gamma rays. They are high energy radiation that poses various kinds of effects there on the genetic materials. They are highly mutagenic and when such radiation reaches into the cell, it is getting absorbed mainly on the atoms that have been present in the cells. They import energy to the electrons there in their outer shells. These energized electrons are ejected from the atoms leaving behind free radicals ionized atoms with the unpaired electron presence. So, these free radicals can react violently with the molecules including DNA in the cell. The free radical breaks both the phosphodiester bonds of the DNA helix causing a double strand break. The cell's usual mutational repair enzymes cannot able to fix this kind of a damage. Thus, the ionizing radiation mainly causes strand breaks that is they are technically referred as a calastogenic factors meaning they can able to cause the chromosomal breakage there in the cell. As I already listed, they can able to form various kinds of reactive molecules such as peroxides that can able to damage the DNA molecule. Now, we look at what may be the mechanism that may be employed in the eukaryote to face this kind of a mutation. That is, what is their mutational repair mechanism? In eukaryotes, most of the species found to have multiple copies of their chromosomes there in the nucleus. In the meiosis, in particular during the synaptonemal complex formation, the fragmented chromosomes may be repaired. It is mainly by pairing of the fragmented chromosome there with the normal chromosomal counterparts or with their normal chromosomal homologs, the repair could be accomplished. It is speculated that meiosis may have evolved initially in the living organisms as a mechanism to repair the double strand breaks that usually occurs in the DNA due to the action of this kind of ionizing radiations. Now, we look at the points related to non-ionizing radiation. The non-ionizing radiation mainly composed of the ultraviolet radiation that is the component of sunlight that usually tans. So, you can able to look at the how the sunlight has tanned a person's hand. You can able to see the color variation between the place that have been commonly exposed there to the sunlight and that has been covered with the cloth. This non-ionizing radiation found to contain less amount of energy than that of the ionizing radiation. So, they may not cause induction of atoms or ejection of electrons and usually the free radical formation. These are all resulted mainly by the ionizing radiation. That won't happen here. However, the only effect that causes is they can be easily absorbed by certain organic ringed compounds that have been present there in the cell. Especially the outer shell electrons when absorbing the ultraviolet radiation, they become so reactive. So, this kind of organic ringed molecules that have been present in the cells are mainly the nitrogenous bases, mainly pyrimidine bases that comprises of thymine and cytosine. Now, we look at the characteristic features of the UV radiation. The UV radiation spectrum can be subdivided into three wavelengths that can be designated as a UVA, 
of 400 to 320 nanometer and UVB of 320 to 280 nanometer and UVC that is within 280 to 100 nanometer. The effective wavelength that can be able to penetrate there in the ringed organic molecules such as uh, nitrogenous bases is uh, 260 nanometer which exactly correspond to the DNA's maximum absorption peak. So, this is the wavelength that can be able to cause the mutation there in the cell. Thus, the 260 nanometer of the UV radiation can be absorbed by the pyrimidine bases such as thymine and cytosine. In certain condition, if the nucleotides are present on the either side of a strand or made up of pyrimidine as shown there in the downside diagram, a double covalent bond formation could be resulted between them. So, this cross-linked adjacent pyrimidine molecule when they are present there in a strand, they can be referred as a pyrimidine dimer in general and when thymine is specifically present there, they can be called as a thymine dimers. So, the formation of thymine dimers in a nucleotide strand can be able to cause kink there in the backbone of the strand. So, formation of a kink is one that attracts the DNA repair mechanism process there in the cell. The cellular UV repair systems will be involved in cleaving the bonds that link the adjacent pyrimidine or they can excise that is cut the entire pyrimidine dimer from the strand and fill in the gap. This filling process could be assisted by using the other strand as a template. The pyrimidine dimer if goes unrepaired, the DNA polymerase may fail to replicate the portion of the strand that includes the dimer that can skip ahead and leaving a problem area which can be filled later. If the fill-in process is often conducted in an error-prone way, that may again create mutational changes there in the base sequence in the gap region. Some unrepaired pyrimidine dimers may block the DNA replication altogether which may end lethal for the cell. Now, we look at what is meant by cyclobutane pyrimidine dimer formation. They are formed when the ultraviolet light is absorbed by adjacent pyrimidine on one strand that may end in cyclization of the double stranded carbon 5 as well as carbon 6 atoms of each base. That results in the formation of a cyclobutane ring as shown there in the right hand side of the diagram. When UV radiation of a 260 nanometer induces dimerization of the adjacent pyrimidine residues, if this or both made up of thymine that results in the cyclobutane dimer formation. In this condition, the pyrimidine rings are covalently linked by formation of a four-membered ring structure resulting from saturation of their respective 5' prime as well as 6' prime double bonds there in the molecule. The cyclobutane pyrimidine dimer formation results in the loss of base pairing with the opposite strand usually causes a localized denaturation of the DNA, producing a bulky DNA lesions there in the cell, which may able to disrupt the replication as well as the transcription process of the cell. Sunlight can be able to cause dangerous effects on the skin cells. Mainly the UV portion of the sunlight can be able to cause mutation on the skin cells. Indeed, studies shows that a strong and direct association seems to be exist between the exposure of a bright sunlight to UV induced DNA damage and even skin cancer formation on the human beings. A deep tan may not be of a healthy symptom. It may be saying the condition resulted due to the UV exposure and mutation caused there on the skin. A rare hereditary disorder among the humans that could be caused mainly by the UV light is referred by the term xeroderma pigmentosum. The affected individuals will be having the lesions like this as shown there in the photos here. Actually, it causes problems after even a lesser exposure of a UV. Individuals with this disorder develop extensive skin tumors after exposure to the sunlight. Because of the lack of mechanism that have been involved in the DNA repair, the UV radiation causes major mutational effects on the organism.